A New York was the subject of a letter sent to investors today. The York is referring to York Capital Management, the firm run by billionaire Jamie Dinan. The new that he was referring to centered on Dinan's decision to spin off or wind down most of the firm's hedge fund operations to focus on private equity and private credit. York plans to spin off its Asian hedge fund, liquidate the European one, and manage mostly internal capital at the flagship U.S. fund. Uh, the firm currently manages about $8.5 billion worth of longer duration strategies that will now be its focus. Now, this doesn't mean Dynan is fully closing up shop, but it's certainly an about face for an industry veteran who cut his teeth in merger arbitrage about three decades ago. Now, in the letter, Dynan wrote 2020 has been a year marked by tremendous upheaval and disruption. He goes on to say that while York has historically excelled during periods of significant dislocation, we are, of course, not immune to the shifts occurring beneath our feet. Notably, Credit Suisse said that it will have to take a $450 million impairment charge from the 30 percent stake the Swiss bank acquired in York about a decade ago. Guys. Not great timing for, for Credit Suisse, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, Leslie, it's interesting coming. Is this year otherwise broadly quite a good year for, for certain big high profile hedge funds? It depends on which hedge fund you ask. Well, if it's been a year of dispersion in returns. You've got certain funds who are performing incredibly well amid the volatility, uh, amid the certain outperformers that we've seen in the markets. And it depends on what market you participate in as well. And then on the other hand, you see certain strategies and certain funds that are doing horribly this year, uh, especially those that are kind of in that risk parity space, some that are quantitatively driven, uh, systematic, kind of run by those algorithms and computers, uh, have been unable to really predict aspects related to the vaccine and COVID, uh, as well as the election, of course. So it really depends on the strategy, but this has definitely been a year marked by a huge dispersion in returns. Yeah, I was going to just add, Leslie, that, you know, there was this year, because of the path, uh, the violence of the decline from an all-time high, and then the, the, the rapid rebound uh, in a way that happened so much faster, more dramatically than most people. You had multiple ways to get it wrong. If, if the cadence was wrong, your risk mm -hmm. exposures weren't there. And so I understand that. I also happen to see in this case a little bit of a larger theme of a generational shift. Uh, you have a lot of these, you know, uh, people who are started hedge funds in the 90s or even before that, and they are getting to maybe toward the end of their own careers. And there's not a lot of succession uh, happening. It's not about passing it down to the, to the next uh, the next generation of, of managers. In some cases, there, there are exceptions to this, but there's definitely a little bit of a, um, you know, if not me, who, and and maybe you just sort of like narrow your focus down to either a core or a, a private family office? Yeah, that's a really important question in the hedge fund world is this idea that can you have a succession plan in a hedge fund, especially those that are run uh, by kind of star candidates? That's been something that a lot of hedge fund managers have decided to either just close, become a family office. Uh, you know, rarely do you really see kind of people passing the baton in the hedge fund world. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.